Cristán. Dearly beloved, we are gathered today to pay our final tribute of respect to that which was mortal of our deceased loved one and friend. To you, the members of the family who mourn your loss, we especially offer our deep and sincere sympathy. May we share with you the comfort afforded by God's word for such a time as this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Good afternoon to all of you. On behalf of my family and myself, church family here at Spite Stone, we want to offer our deepest sympathy to Linda's family. Superintendent, our superintendent, Anderson Kelman, also at extend his condolences to the family. Please remain standing as we have an opening prayer. Good afternoon. That's bar has in prayer. You, dear Father, God, you are our creator. You are the author of life, which is the, pre, uh, the precious gift to us. Lord, as we come today to commemorate and honor a life that is precious to us all, the life of our dear sister, Linda Evadne Bess. Lord, your word in Psalms 1, 16, verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. Sister Linda is, better, is in a better place, free of pain and discomfort, and in your presence. As the Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 8, we are confident, I say, and, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Lord, your son Jesus mourned at the death of his friend Lazarus before raising him, raising him from the dead, showing that there, is, that there is nothing wrong with mourning and that he is the resurrection and life. And Paul reminds us that at the death of uh, Christians, we don't have to mourn as those who, who have no hope. Father, as we speak with one another, sing, listen to eulogies and your word, help us to focus our thoughts on your goodness. Lord, direct our thoughts to the fond memories of our dear friend and family the late sister Linda. And let us be comforted knowing that her life was one well lived and impactful to our lives in many ways. This I ask in Jesus' name and pray. Amen. Thank you, Minister McLean. Please remain standing as we sing our first hymn. I'm going to invite the worship team to come at this time and lead us in this hymn. Please remain standing. Our first hymn, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place. Enough. 
scripture reading Psalm 90 verse 1 to 12 read by Tiana Bess Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll be reading Psalms 90, 1 to 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn, oh shoot, sorry. You turn people back to the saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you swept people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass in the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but in the evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the night of your presence. All our days have passed away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moon. Our days may come to 70 years or 80. If our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days and that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Thank you. Amen. Second song. For your mercy and your grace. to sing these songs for her for your mercy and your grace for your mercy for your mercy and your grace and for being my hiding place oh lord i offer up i offer up my sacrifice of praise to you you supply me with all of my needs Lord you've been so good to me that's why I offer up I offer up my sacrifice of praise for your healing, for your healing of 
Tribute in song by Lisa Hackett. Lisa? is running a little late so we'll put her a little later all right i'm gonna ask some verse to come back at this time and sing that song power of your love directly after this song i'm gonna ask renee best to come to the podium and deliver the eulogy for us I 
would unveil my eyes Let me see you face to face The knowledge of your love As you live in me Lord, renew Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Linda Ivadni Bess. Born, born September 20th, 1954. <laughs> to Miriam Bess and Mr. Oswald Walker. She attended the St. Peter's Girls School and the LRC Secondary School. Linda was one of seven children. She left to mourn four children, seven grandchildren, and one great grandchild. I can read, I can read. As a young adult, she worked at Ocean Fisheries 
before moving on to Bajan Services, now Blue Sky, where she worked as a gardener for over 20 years before retiring during the pandemic. Linda was a strong, resilient, and hardworking woman. She went to work every day religiously to provide for her children. When she finished work, she would head home and begin her second job, which was the cleaning and boning of flying fish. She would stay up all night, sometimes after midnight, to finish up to 500 fish for her many customers. On weekends, she would enlist the help of her children with packaging the fish, and she would always provide them with a small stipend. That was the beginning of a philosophy that she instilled in us from young, which included working to make an honest dollar. I remember as a little girl, I would wait up late at night, being the only grandchild at that time, eyes burning and all, just to get a stipend too, and I received just that. Apart from being this hard working, Linda was the life of the party. In her younger days, she would go to places like St. Maria's Bar and Fisherman's Pub to shake a leg. Attending events like Four Day Morning, Grand Kadumant, the Independence Parade, and the lighting of the city were a must for her. She and her late sister Esther would go to take along their children, and if any of them were participating in any of these events, she would be on the sidelines cheering on. Linda loved to cook and experiment in the kitchen, and anything she did was well done. The turnovers, conkies, rotis, rice tea, fish cakes, just to name a few. Don't talk about the rum punch. Linda made what most would consider the best rum punch. There were no picnics or other celebrations in the family without it. Despite the many attempts from others to get this most coveted recipe, she would never share it. She was skilled in many other areas, including making her own curtains and cushion covers at Christmas and clothes for herself and her children. She would also raise her own chickens, turkeys, and ducks. Linda was very big on discipline. Most times, all she had to do was give her children the look and they would know to fall in line. You would never be idle in her house. Everyone would be assigned chores and had to be doing something productive at all times. She taught her children responsibility and independence, and they also had to attend Sunday school weekly. Linda simply did things her own way, and once her mind was made up, there was no turning back. And if you ever tried to tell her what to do, she would surely tell you which bus stop to get off at. She didn't play. After all the excitement, Linda decided to change her life and commit to God. She was baptized through the Spitestown Nazarene Church in 2009. Since then, her focus was on God and family, especially those grandchildren who she adored. She would always make sure they had what they needed, and although she did not get to see them off to school this term, she is smiling down, knowing they were fully prepared. In the last few years of her life, Linda had become a very humble and laid back person, which was surprising, particularly to family, as she was always known to be that person to speak her mind and stand up for herself. It was as though she had made peace with God and was prepared for her time to come. I am happy to say that she received the care she deserved from her loved ones, from the oldest to the smallest during that time. Linda, you will be truly missed by all who knew you and will forever be in our hearts. 
We love you. Rest now. You are in a better place. Thank you, Renee. Supported by your sisters, your mother. O2057, you are blocking someone in the Lumber Company's car park. You are asked to move your vehicle. O2057. Please stand with me as we have our second scripture reading, John 14, verse 1 to 6, read by Danica. Best. Okay. Directly after Danico, Lisa will come and do her special, her tribute and song. Good afternoon, everyone. Today's scripture reading is taken from St. John 14, verses 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there is many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place to you, for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive unto myself that where I am there you may also be. And whether I go, I go ye. No, and And the way ye know, Thomas said unto him, The Lord we know, not whether it's their ghost, and how we can know the way. Jesus said unto him, And I the way, the truth, and the life. May no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. Thank you, Monica. Thank you very much. You may see. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, church. Special condolences to the family, friends, and loved ones of Mrs. Bess. This song is dedicated from her daughter, Tina to Mrs. Bess. The title of this song is Goodbye is the Saddest Word. May you find comfort in this song. Give life to me, turned a baby into a lady. And mama, all I ever needed was a guarantee of you loving me. And I know there is no other love like a mother's love for her child and it hurts so there's something so strong someday we'll be gone we must say goodbye oh, goodbye's the saddest word i'll ever hear Goodbye's the last time I will hold you near. Someday you'll say that word and I will cry. It will break my heart to hear you say goodbye. Mama, 
you gave love to me turned a baby into a woman and mama all you had to offer was a promise of a lifetime of love and i know that there is no other love like a mother's love for her child and it hurts so there's something so strong someday we'll be gone we must say goodbye oh no no goodbye's the saddest word i'll ever hear goodbye's the last time i will hold you near someday you'll say that word and i will cry it will break my heart to hear you say goodbye cause the love you give will always live here you'll always be here every time i fall you are to me the greatest love of all you take my weakness and you make me strong and i will love you till forever come broken fly I'll be your shelter through the raging storm and I will love you till forever come goodbye's the saddest word I'll ever hear goodbye's the last time I will hold you Today you'll say that word and you who will cry It breaks my heart to hear you say goodbye Until we meet again Until then Goodbye Rest in peace Miss Bess
is thy faithfulness. of great is thy faithfulness. Indeed, God is faithful. God has been faithful and God will continue to be faithful. I met Linda 19 years and some months ago. March coming will be 20 years that I took up the pastorate here at Spikestown. And Linda was part of that congregation when I first came down or came up. She was one of those persons that we we'll be at church, come, come shine, come rain, come shine. And she was not a Christian at that time. I had the privilege of leading her to Christ and uh, Baptizing her into the family of God. And she remained faithful to the church. It's only after she came, she became ill, that she will not come as often as before. Linda would have been 70 years. Saturday gone, 28th of September, and she had plans, she had plans of coming to church on the Sunday, the 29th, and I was pleasantly blessed and surprised when I saw her family walked into the church on Sunday. That was her plan to be here the Sunday after her birth date. But that was not to be. That was not to be. Psalm 190, Psalm 90, sorry, the scripture that was read, the first scripture reading. The psalmist talks about the frailty and brevity of life. And he asks God a question. He asked God to teach him to number his days. Teach him to number his days. So when Moses considered the frail nature of humanity and the righteous judgment of God, it made him ask that question. Teach me to number my days. 
this evening, this is a reality check for all of us. Reminding us of the frailty and the brevity of life as well as the holiness of God and our need for Him. Because it is He who number our days. It is He that call, calls us home. So the request to teach us to number our days means that we need to ask God to reveal to us make us understand how serious life is and this revelation will help us to to grow wise grow wise and give us wisdom as we make choices and I say eternal choices because the choices that we make can be eternal choices where will I spend eternity after I live my life what next what next So as we consider this question that Moses asked God, as we look at our own life, as we look and see how people pass around us, family members, friends, just this week a friend of mine passed away. It seems as though every week some person that I know that are close to me are passing. And Jesus told a parable of a rich man. And this rich man had plenty, had a lot. And he said to his soul, so they're going to eat and drink and be merry. The rich man believed that he had years ahead of him. So he will enjoy his wealth and have pleasure, have fun, be merry. I want to suggest to us that Jesus told this story because this man had no time for God. Had no time for God. But God had time for him. Because that very night, he died. If this rich man had learned to, to number his days, he would have had in mind the things eternal. He will not just be thinking about having, enjoying his time and being merry, but he would have laid up his treasures in heaven. Because he would have known that I have to number my days. My days do not belong to me. It's God. God is in control. But he was busy with worldly pleasures. 
and all that he had. My friends, none of us know how many days we have, how many days that God would have granted to us. So we need to take heed of this parable and not waste our time, our resources on earthly pleasures. But consider eter the eternal value of life. Where will I spend eternity? After all of this, where will I spend eternity? That's something for us to consider. Amen? Will I spend eternity in the bosom of Jesus? Will I spend eternity with my Father, my Heavenly Father? Or will I spend eternity in hell? You don't like to talk about hell these days, huh, Rev? Bishop Kornbach? You don't like to talk about hell. But it's a reality. There's no middle ground. Is that a heaven or hell? I've got news for you. Is that a heaven or hell? So we need to consider this question that Moses asked God. Teach me to number my days. You see, those, who, those of us who have learned to number our days, spend them in pursuit of wisdom and the kingdom of God. No wonder the Bible tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things will be added. I'm not saying that we are not supposed to seek after wealth. No. Go get it. If God bless you with it, no problem. No problem. But please do not forget God in your pursuit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things be added unto you. You see, Linda understood that Jesus came to earth to reconcile her back to her father. And that's why she, 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 she seek God in her pursuit. Jesus came to reconcile every one of us back to the Father. So all of us have a chance. All of us have a chance. To seek after God. You see, those who never learn to number their days spend them as if this life is all there is. But there's more to this life. Linda has transitioned from this life. But as we normally say, it becomes a cliche nowadays. She's in a better place. And that's, that's, that's a fact. She's in a better place. No more pain. No more crying. She is in a better place. And she is in that better place because she learned how to number her days. I 
and she received Christ as her Lord and Savior. The psalm that was read to us warns us about the judgment that will come. About the judgment that will come. And the writer to the Hebrews made it clear that there is, a, there is an appointed time for all of us. A couple of Sundays ago was her time. That was her appointed time. But there is an appointed time for all of us. And after that, there's a judgment. We can't get away from it can't cancel this appointment at all. You can't call and say, I, I can't make it. It's not possible. Have to keep it. And after that, there is judgment. So the writer to the Hebrews is suggesting that we are destined to die once. And then comes the judgment. But when we learn to number our days, we see each day as a valuable gift from God. Each day, we see it as a valuable gift from God. Now the people that say nowadays, every day above ground is a good day. Because it's a gift from God. And it gives us opportunity to store up our treasures in heaven. You see, once you're this side of heaven, beloved, you have an opportunity to make it right. So my friends, human life is short and frail and no one is guaranteed a tomorrow. No one. I could be here preaching now and tomorrow you hear that I'm gone. Or today you hear that I'm gone. Hmm? A couple of weeks ago a friend of mine was killed. And another friend of ours told me, I spoke to him this morning. We chatted this morning. And by 1.30, he was dead. You see, I'm saying this to, to us because I want you to understand that there's no guarantee of tomorrow. So we must learn to number our days. In this psalm, Moses said, your sleep, or he tells us, your sleep, or you're swept away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass. And I'm, I'm sure you heard when Tiana was reading. You are like new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up as new grass, by evening it is dry and withered. That's the brevity of life. You can be here this morning and tomorrow or this evening you are no more. That's why it is important that we number our days. Amen? Amen? Not going to be much longer. For so the church now to say my first closing. My congregation is saying, oh, okay. Beloved, for some, this life will last only a few years. For others, it will last many decades. I spoke to my friend Darnley when I came in. And he informed me that he's 86 years old now. 
That's four decades and some. So some of us will live and last many decades. But for all, there will be a day when it will end. There will be a day when it will end. So consider this question that Moses asked. Consider what he said. Teach me. Teach us to number our days. I know this is not a subject that we like to talk about a lot. Huh? Or even think about. But we need to be aware of death. And that it is inevitable. It will happen. It will come. I can't preach to Linda any longer. Hmm? Preach to her when she was around. And she listened and she understood and she gave her life to Christ and she, start, and she served her God. But I can speak to you now. Because you are still here. I know many of you may be Christians. Many of you may have made that decision already. But I'm sure that there, there is at least one person here that is not a Christian. That haven't made that decision. That haven't considered the question of numbering their days. And understanding that there's going to be a judgment. And that it will come. It will come. So let us be disciplined. Let us discipline ourselves to consider just how short our lives really are. Moses said, the years of our lives are 70 or even 80 by reason of strength. Yet, their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone. And we fly away. So that question is put to you. To number your days. And consider Consider God. Consider God in your pursuit. In your gathering of, 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 of treasure, lay up some treasure in heaven for yourself. In closing, this is a prayer of David. He says, for we are here for but a moment. Strangers in the land as our fathers were. Our days on earth are like a shadow. Gone so soon without a trace. So my friends, I will close with asking you, to consider your days. Amen. Father, we, we thank you for your word. Your word has been given to us for instruction. And Father God, as I deliver your message to your people, I pray, God, that it will fall on good ground and bear much fruit. Let those who are here this evening, let them consider the days. Let them recognize that they need Jesus in their lives. My task is finished. I preach your word to your people. 
So I pray that it will go forth with power and accomplish what you would have sent it forth to accomplish. Let the people of God say amen. Please stand with me as the worship team comes back and sing this song, Draw Me Close to You. As you sing this song, consider, consider to number your days. And after this song, we'll have a prayer for the family. So we ask the family to gather around the casket as our minister Steve Farrell will come and pray for you. God bless you.
Family? Family, yes, come. All the family, yes, come. dedicated in our church in Spice Town, Queen Street. Now they have grown. Mr. Steve? even as we pray even now Lord we acknowledge your presence with us this afternoon yes indeed you're here Jesus At such a time as this as we gather with this family yes Lord you are here so let us pray gracious father we bring this grieving family to you at this time Lord, as a church, we identify with them in their pain and loss. And even as your word instructs us, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Lord, indeed, we weep with Linda's family this afternoon and we surround them with your unfailing love precious Lord you know what it means to lose a loved one the Bible tells us that you wept when your friend Lazarus died and your heart was touched by the tears and sorrow of his sisters so even now precious Lord Jesus be close to this family Oh Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, let your comfort come on them, Lord. Let your peace and your comfort come on them right now, in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, let your sweet peace and loving comfort fill their hearts. And help them to trust you even now. We especially ask you to reassure her children, her grandchildren, great-grands, and those very close friends that your love for them has not ceased, Lord, but you continue to be very near and you continue to love them. And Father, you care about them even now and you identify with them in their hour of grief dear lord help these individuals to find comfort in the fact that your will is perfect and you always know what is best for us even when we don't understand your plan may they also find consolation in the fact that linda who numbered her days and made the wise choice to receive you as Savior oh Lord she is now taking her rest that is promised to every departing saint so Lord keep this family together loving and caring for each other just as Linda would have wanted continue to be their shepherd provide for their needs and grant them Lord you abide in comfort, strength, and peace, even at this time in their bereavement. Father, carry them, cover them, comfort them, give them strength, and help them to be able to move on with their lives 
and continue to treasure in their hearts the beautiful memories of their loved one this we pray this afternoon in Jesus name and let the church say amen, amen. and amen. amen praise God okay we'll have our sessional song so we'll go out this Thursday night we'll go cast him find the follow while we sing this song and then you'll
and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will but we all will change in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will raise imperishable, and we will be changed. Then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who live, who die, sorry, in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. For as much as the Spirit of our departed loved one has returned to God, who give it, we therefore tenderly commit her body to the grave, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, ensure trust and certain hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who shall give to us new bodies like unto his glorious body, blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. Amen.
of first sin, it is well with my soul.
for the price you paid Bearing all my sin and shame In love you came Gave amazing grace Thank you for this love
final curtain My friend, I'll say it clear I'll state my case Of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few But then again, too few to mention I did what I had to do Saw it through without exemption I planned each chartered course Each careful step along the byway And more, much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off more than I could chew But through it all When there was time I find it all so amusing to think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way. Have our closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, God of all mercy, we look to you in this moment of sorrow and bereavement. Comfort these dear ones whose hearts are heavy and sad. May you be with them, sustain and guide them in the days to come. Grant, O Lord, that they may love and serve you and obtain the fullness of your promises in the world to come. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, 
not great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good to every good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Let the people of God say, Amen. 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 Thank you all for taking time out from your busy schedules to be here this evening to pay your final respects to Linda, Linda Bess. <laughs> Wonderful woman. A woman that I always, I never saw her with a frown on her face. Always had a smile on her face. No matter the circumstance, she had a smile on her face. So I'm gonna call her daughter and Tina to just come and say thanks to you. Hi, good evening everyone. I just want to thank each and every one of you, those who are here, those who watch it over um, YouTube, thank you just thank you for being here for my mom and for our family at this time thanks for coming to sure that we as a church we mourn with you and we are going to be praying with you and praying for you during these difficult times it's going to get easier as the days and months roll on but we know how you are grieving now. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. <laughs>